Let's compare the top M2 Pro ship with the base M2 Pro ship and see if it's actually worth the extra $300 to upgrade this ship in a photography workflow. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you have already subscribed to the channel, thank you. If you're new, welcome, glad to have you here. Please consider subscribing because that will definitely help out the channel. As usual, I'll be sharing with you a lot of information. I highly encourage that you pause the video so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to the analysis I'll be sharing with you. I'll also leave timestamp below so you can jump forward to the various tests. And if you're new, I highly encourage that you sit through the introduction to get some insight for the testing methodology that I'm using. And if you're finding this video helpful, I'll leave a link to my tip jar below. And also you can choose to use YouTube Super Thanks as well. I greatly appreciate this. Any funding that you contribute will help support the channel and go into a saving fund to purchase future hardwares to run testing on this channel. And with this in mind, we're going to talk about the top M2 Pro versus the base M2 Pro ship. There are some variations between these two and it really comes down to around $300 when you go in and look at these variations. Most of the time you're going to see these variations on the Mac mini and also on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. For the 16 inch one, Apple has already pre-upgraded you to the top M2 Pro ship. So that's just something to remember. But if you're looking at the Mac mini or the 14 inch MacBook Pro, well, these are some consideration points. All right, so for this, what we're gonna do is take a look at our test system. We have two stock system that we're going to use. One of them is 16 and one of them is 14. There may be some thermal differences between these two, but in essence, the variation of these are going to be fairly minor and is going to give us a pretty good idea whether we want to go in and upgrade these systems or not. And with this in mind, I'll also be adding a few reference systems for us to compare as well. For example, I'll add in the Mac Mini with the base M2 Pro. And when I say base or top, I'm really just referring to the SOC, the silicon itself. I'm not really referring to the configuration that Apple has um, already stock and pre-configured for you. So just as something to keep in mind. We'll also be including the result from the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is the top M1 Pro ship. Amazingly enough, between these three machines, you can see that they contain the same amount of CPU and GPU. So we're gonna see some variations here that's gonna show up. The other thing too is that on the Mac Mini, I upgraded 32 gigabytes of memory and no, this does not null and void all these testing I'm doing or make it useless in any way at all. It just gives us an insight into a different performance metrics on the machine itself. And I'll also include the result from the Mac Studio as well. This is a stock configuration with the M1 Ultra chip. And next up is test configuration. With this, we have to extrapolate the data. I can't test every single configuration that's out there because it is financially impossible and also mathematically, it's just really impossible as well to spend all the time testing and the financial resources that is needed. So the best thing you can do is all the charts, I have listed the resources that the app is using from the system. And I'll also share that with you verbally as well. So I will look at those carefully and really determine what you are using your machine to do most. And that's going to give you a really good idea for how to configure your system. As usual, Apple have separated their ship into two segments. One of them is more consumer leaning. The other one is more pro oriented. The pro ships are going to give you more capabilities. For example, more high performance core, more GPU on the system, the ability to link up to more displays, more IO ports, all those things. So if you're a pro, definitely consider using the pro ship instead. And what we're going to be covering are going to be the more pro oriented ship too. And with this in mind, I'll be approaching this from a pro photographer perspective. That is what I do. And I also do some light video work. So I will include the videos result in here too. All the testing you're going to see, the results are going to be from a single app. And what I really want to do, and the reason why I'm testing this way is because I want to see how the silicon is performing one generation to the next and from one machine to the next. So realistically, what I want to do, know is how much faster they're going to perform. Some have commented on the video saying that this is an invalid test because it doesn't include multitasking. What it really comes down to at the end of the day, if you multitask is to configure your system with more resources, not necessarily for speed by upgrading a ship, but more RAM in the system, because as you launch more apps, the RAMs are going to get used up on your system. So those are the things to consider. SSD, the one component that you can technically expand once you have configured your computer system with an external hard drive, SSD, a NAS, or a DAS so you can link up to the system. 
My recommendation is to configure this based on the size and the capacity that you are going to use today and also into the future. Don't go and upgrade to SSD because you want to gain the higher read and write speed because if you can't really use that, you're not gonna gain that much from it at all. And in all these intensive testing that I am going to do, there's really only one task that shows any variation in SSD speed, and the variation is still minimal at best. And I'll share that with you when we get to that slide. But you can see right now in these M2 Pro generations, the 512 chip is not running as fast as, for instance, what has been in the M1 chip. So there's a lot of controversies around here, but I'm gonna leave it at that and just show you with real world result, how this is really not going to change that much what you do. And if you really want to find out how fast of an SSD you really need and if you're going to gain any benefit at all by upgrading to a much faster SSD, I'll leave a link to this video that I made in the description below. The TLDR version is that you're not going to gain that much of a real world difference on the day-to-day -day use when you're image editing or even when you're doing your video workflow. So I can tell you that much. When it comes to RAM, this is the component that you cannot upgrade. There's no way for me to plug in an external RAM to the system or upgrade what's already inside. So think carefully before you configure this. Think about the workflow. Are you a two computer workflow, a desktop and a laptop? Or is this going to be your single computer? If it's, it's going to be a single computer, definitely get more RAM because you're gonna be able to have the program expand into it and get more use out of it in the long run. So those are things to consider. And the other thing too to think about is how you use the computer system. If you're like me and you have too many browser tabs open, guilty, and too many apps running in the background, then think about getting more RAM in your system because it's going to give you a much better user experience overall because once you really go in and start to use application, the thing that goes up with it is also the RAM usage on your system as well. The best thing you can do for Creative Pro, if you really wanna know how much RAM you need, restart your system, launch Activity Monitor, go into the Memory tab, and check out the memory pressure. If you're in the green, Whatever you have right now is good, you can continue. If you're in the yellow or red, you should consider getting more RAM on your system. One advice as well that I have for anyone coming from an Intel machine, I would still look at the memory pressure. For example, if you have an Intel with 32 gigabytes, I wouldn't necessarily get, for example, these Apple Silicon chip with 16 gigabytes of memory because the memory footprint that you have been using before if you're already exceeding that 16 gigabyte, I would still consider just getting the equivalent amount of memory because that's going to take you much longer with these machines. Now, if you don't want to constantly take a peek at Activity Monitor because it doesn't really keep track or there's really no history for the memory pressure, I highly recommend a program called iStat Menu. I'm not affiliated with them, but I'll leave a link to their website. You can download their app in the description below because what this program does is that it keeps track of your usage and the way how you're using your computer for up to 30 days. And I find that a useful metrics for me to really determine if I need more RAM on my system or not. Now, when it comes to Pro, I highly recommend configuring your system with 32 gigabytes of memory because I feel that is the sweet spot. It gives you a lot of opportunity. If you're not using it now, if you should need it, the program can always expand into it. And if you're already using it, well then good, you have a good computer to go out with and you don't have to really go through the swap that often. Now, if you wanna know about the 16 and 32 gigabytes, I'll leave a link to another video as well that compares a 16 to 32 gigabyte in a pro workflow running all the brushes like in Lightroom. That is really gonna show you the variations that you're going to start to see. And this is how you're going to read the specs as I'm going to share with you in the chart. If you wanna come back, I'll leave a chapter marked to this as well. Now let's look at Lightroom Classic running on Ventura 13.2, Lightroom Classic version 12.1. Everything has been retested on all the machines I'm showing you and they all support full hardware acceleration. So let's take a look at the result. So this is what we're seeing right now and it's quite surprising that the 12 core is really running that much better than the 10 core even though it's from the same generation chip. This is a task that really just target the CPU. So this is telling us two things. Number one, that it is 35% faster. And secondly, this base M2 Pro chip is running inside a 14 inch MacBook Pro chassis. So that could be one of the factors why we're seeing this big time gap. Now the other thing I also wanna point out as well is that when we're running these tests, the way how Lightroom Classic is really running on these chips are a little bit different. For example, on the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip with the 12 CPU, it's really saturating everything as you're seeing right now. On the opposite end of things, on the 10 CPU version, I mean, the two efficiency cores are really not peaking past 30%. 
the other cores are not really peaking at 100%. So there's really something going on with the optimization as well that's causing us not to really see the full potential of this machine at the moment. And this is something consistently that I have found. Now, if we add in the reference machine, we see something that's absolutely consistent with the 10 CPU version, and that is they all perform about the same. Between the current generation and the previous generation, we're really talking about a delta of around 31 seconds variation. Whereas this one sits at the very top, and it's coming really close to the M1 Ultra. So obviously there's some optimization issue going on in addition to everything else. But I mean, yes, definitely this is the speed king when you're really just comparing, for example, these two machines right now. However, in other tasks, it may not be as such. Now, when it comes to export in Lightroom Classic, this is using CPU and GPU in combination. And for this, we are seeing around a 20% speed improvement. Again, the benefit here really comes from the additional core on both the CPU and GPU, but because we were talking about two more CPU and also three more GPUs, and that's the reason why we're seeing that time variation. Now, if we really think about that time variation, you're only talking about a three minutes. Yes, it is 20%, but this is also 1000 files that I feel in general, and you're gonna see this conclusion at the end too, you may be better off upgrading other components in the machine that you're going to see much more benefit in other tasks that you may do. Let's add in all the reference machine and amazingly enough, the M2 Pro inside the Mac Mini is pulling up ahead with this timing that's even faster than the M2 Pro inside, for instance, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So that's really giving us some consideration there that on the desktop machine, because I mean, the fan can just run, there's pretty much all the room that it needs for thermal dissipation. That may be what is contributing to the timing factor that we're seeing right now. M1 Ultra still sits at the very top. However, if you're really comparing this generation machine, the M2 Pro, for instance, these two variations to the M1 Pro, I mean, they're coming really close to each other. I don't see that much variation at all. It's just only a few minutes. And if you, for instance, already have the M1 Pro, keeping with that machine is probably not a bad idea either. All right, let's take a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge. All of these, what you're gonna find out is that they're only about a second or two apart. These are all within margin of error. So if you do this, you're not gonna have a problem. However, when it comes to a panorama merge, this is going to give us a slightly different story. And it's a surprising one at best because for instance, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the base M2 Pro is performing much faster than the M2 Pro top spec inside this machine. Now, for this task, RAM is mostly being used along with the CPU on the system, less so the CPU, but more so the RAM. I find this result rather interesting. And when we add in the other machine, we can see a couple of things happening right now that the moment we go in and really upgrade the RAM on the system, this is a task that can definitely benefit from this. Now, if we take a look at this in general between the one terabyte that has the much faster double the speed SSD to the one that, for instance, half the half speed SSD. I mean, they're still performing just about the same when we take a look at those two machines. So for instance, the top M1 Pro and the top M2 Pro. So SSD speed on this, even though it is doing some swapping, it's really not making that much of a difference. Whereas if you just go in and upgrade the RAM to, for instance, 64 gigabytes, you're gonna get much more out of a system that way. Now let's take a look at Lightroom. This is Ventura 13.2, Lightroom Cloud version 6.1. Everything support full hardware acceleration. And the result is again shocking that is running faster on the base M2 Pro instead of the top M2 Pro ship. This is a task that uses CPU, GPU, and RAM all in combination together. And if we take a look at this, with all the other reference machine. Again, this is painting the result in the exact same way. And I would, you know, if you're running these tests or you're testing these out, I would just look at the CPU chart, especially in iStat menu, because there are some things that are just not really fully optimized for all these platform yet. So I don't think we're really seeing the final picture for how these are gonna perform at this moment in time but we're getting a glimpse into them and the way how they are performing right now. For instance, the top M1 Pro and the top M2 Pro is performing pretty much just about the same. In fact, the top M1 Pro is beating out the top M2 Pro by around like five seconds or so. That's rather interesting. The slow machine tends to run faster and even the base machine inside a desktop configuration is really giving the top machine inside the laptop chassis a run for the money. So a lot of considerations here to really think about. Now let's take a look at Capture One. Ventura 13.2, Capture 123, version 16.0.2. .2. 
When we compare this task, yes, having more CPU on the system is definitely helping. This attributes to around a 9% increase and it's close to around a two minute time to render preview. Now, if this is important to you, I mean, you can definitely consider upgrade, but I think that this margin is getting smaller and smaller. When we compare this to the other machine, we can see clearly that Capture One does not scale well at all. For example, throw in a lot of resources on the CPU department, double those, and we're still not getting the time that really scales down appropriately. It should be half, but it's not. So this gives us an idea and the way how the 10 core system are clustering together, they're pretty much performing just about the same. In fact, the previous generation is beating out the base M2 Pro inside even the Mac Mini that's supposed to be like the faster one in the previous test. We're starting to see now that not all machines are equal in all the tasks. And we also are dependent on software to really go in and utilize the system fully as well. So it's a multi-pronged thing that we're really looking at right now. Take a look at the export result for this one is really just using GPU and having the extra three GPU equivocate itself for a 4% time decrease when you're really trying to export these files. Personally, I would just go with the base configuration and save $300. That would be my opinion about how one may go about doing that. And if we take a look at this in reference to the other machine, yes, the Ultra is still the fastest, but it's only literally by under four minutes faster than the top M2 Pro. So those are just some of the things to consider right there. And I'll say that even though the M1 Pro is lagging behind a little bit with the 16 core GPU, I mean, it's still holding on its own just fine. You're talking about a five minute longer export time versus buying an entire new computer to upgrade the ship. So I'm also adding that annotation in as well on these reference machine to give us some perspective on this. And let's now take a look at the result from Photoshop. For this, I am using Digital Lloyd Test from Lloyd Chamber. I'll leave a link to his website in the description below. I am running three of his tests in these benchmark to give us an idea for how the machine performed. Let's first start with Photoshop speed. Even though we see the charts are not lining up right now, we're only talking about milliseconds apart and without computer to time this, to us human, I mean, timing is going to be just about the same. So speed, there's no issue whatsoever in any of these machines. And now let's take a look at Photoshop Medium. This is a 15.7 gigabyte file. This is almost filling up the 16 gigabyte RAM on the system already. So I've done this test with two different memory configuration. One of them is giving Photoshop 70%. So that means that there are definitely going to be swaps that are happening in this particular group of tests. Whereas a 90%, there'll be less of a swap happening because we are now allocating more RAM that Photoshop can go in and just use on the system. So when we allocate this as 70%, we start to see that yes, there is some slight speed decrease because it has to swap to the SSD. However, if you could just really go in and you want to get the fast performing system, and this is giving you some perspectives right now, going with the 32 gigabyte, I mean, you're really cutting down the time by quite a bit. And even though you may have a faster SSD, for example, this one terabyte with 16 gigabyte is really running at close to around 6,000 megabytes per second or six gigabyte per second. We're really talking about a time difference of around three seconds on a faster SSD versus really going in and upgrading 32 gigabytes, you're really having a time decrease that it's in the magnitude of four or five times. So these are some of the things to really think about and put into perspective when we're really looking at an SSD from the speed standpoint alone, that you're gonna get much more from upgrading the RAM in the system. You're already seeing that now. And the next chart, it will tell you the same story. And in the last test I'm gonna show you, it's also going to paint the same story as well. Bump this up to 90% and well, the speed does decrease on all of these. And amazingly enough, this top M2 Pro machine is actually running slightly faster than, for example, the top M1 Pro machine with a much faster SSD because, well, it's not really relying so much on the SSD anymore. It's just really using the RAM that is available on the system. So the time variation between these three, I mean, we're really not talking about that much at all, one or two seconds. Now, again, to get the most performance increase, I would go with 32 gigabyte because you really see the timing right there gets cut by quite a bit. Interestingly enough, the 64 when it comes to these file size doesn't really mean much. It's performing just about the same as a 32 gigabyte because it's not really that large of a file and is really just using a quarter of the 64 gigabyte. This was available to the system before anyway in the 70% at full capacity. So at 90%, it's just the same availability. Now let's take a look at the Photoshop huge 56 gigabyte. Now I know some of you work with these files, not everyone does. Let's also keep an open mind when we're looking at this, but this is really telling us a lot of things. So first of all, 
Does the faster SSD inside the one terabyte makes a difference? Yes, but we're really only talking about a minute time variation between this machine and these two. So you really have to ask yourself if this is something that you're doing day in, day out. And I would hope that if this is something you're doing day in, day out, that you would already go in and upgrade the RAM in your system. You already gone in and upgrade the SSD in combination for you to really utilize and get the fastest machine possible. Now, if you're really just doing this every occasionally, every now and then, I mean, it's just only a minute longer. And I would say it's okay to have an SSD that runs slightly slower, but is something that I am going to use. It's not anything that is going to exceed my usage and capability. And I would rather use that money that I'm gonna upgrade SSD to put into something else, such as, for example, 32 gigabyte. So even a 32 gigabyte, for instance, inside this Mac Mini, with a slow 512 SSD that everyone has been complaining about, we're still getting a performance that's actually much faster than a faster SSD at 16 gigabyte. This also tells you that, guess what? It's better to upgrade the RAM on the system than to upgrade the SSD to get a higher speed. You're not getting more performance by upgrading SSD versus upgrading RAM. And this chart tells you what it is. It's around 30 seconds faster. So those are the things to keep in perspective. And if you want the top performance, I mean, heck, go with 64 gigabyte because when you're really working with a file like this, it's just really shorten the time on every single task by a factor of like five. And to me, that's worth it. If that's something that I do day in, day out, 64 gigabyte, it's definitely worth it. Now, another thing I also wanna point out as well is that this 56 gigabyte is taking up close to four times the size of the capacity of the RAM that is available in the system. So I hope this gives us some perspectives and also clear up some anxiety we may have as well from any conversation that many of them has been having out there about, you know, SSD speed, this is really going to affect performance. Out of all the testing that I've done, this is probably the only chart that really shows you that SSD is affecting performance. But even at this, it's really just marginal at best. So let's keep that in perspective as well. All right, let's take a look at Final Cut encoder and decoder engines. So with this in mind, we're gonna take a look. Now, I always recommend if you are a video pro, just get, for example, the Ultra or the Max because it has double the encoder decoder engine, or technically it has more than the Pro. The Ultra technically has four times the Pro, and that's the reason why we're seeing like the timing, it cuts in half. So it's definitely going to help you when you're trying to encode your file, H.264. HEVC is the same story. So if you're a video pro, definitely consider getting the Max or the Ultra. When it comes to ProRes 422, they're close to about the same because Apple has built in a dedicated encoder and decoder specifically for ProRes into these machines and they're performing just about the same. So let's do our analysis of these computer systems and the result that we have seen so far. Main question is, should you upgrade and spend the extra $300 to bump the ship up. I would say that if you really want to do it, for example, for the 14 inch MacBook Pro or for the Mac mini, you can certainly choose to do that. So here are my recommendations if you're going to upgrade your machine anyway. Rather than spending the extra $300 to upgrade the ship for a few extra core CPU and GPU, what I would do is add $100 and combine this upgrade price together. So now you have 400 and use this funding to upgrade to a 32 gigabytes of memory. As you already seen in my test, when you really bump or double the memory from 16 to 32, the timing for many of the tasks that requires memory start to really decrease significantly. So if you want the best performance possible, this is what I would recommend. The other thing too, is that these are single application tests. Think about this for a second. When you start to run multiple applications at the same time, or having them open, having more RAM in your system is definitely going to help maintain that speed that you really want from the system rather than slowing down because you have to swap to an SSD. Now to a lesser extent, if you want to spend maybe $100 less, you can consider upgrading to a one terabyte SSD as you've seen in many of my tests that you're gonna get some speed gain going from a 512 to a one terabyte, but it's not quite as significant as upgrading a RAM in the system. And these are the balances that you really need to think about. The paradigm of computing that we're used to with upgrading RAM first, because RAM is something that a system can use readily right away at a high speed, still applies today as it has been for the past few decades of computing. 
And with that in mind, I have this chart that gives us a general idea for how we can go out and configure our machine, especially if you're coming from the Intel generation machine, and I'm hoping that this would help. So I have the good, better, best going from top to bottom. And with Lightroom, Lightroom Classic Pro are gonna do just fine. Now, if you wanna get more performance out of this, getting the Max definitely help because both of these programs can now go in and utilize the GPU on the system and really help out with, for example, file rendering and also exporting process. If you want the top performance, Ultra is definitely the way to go. Now, if you're really only working with Photoshop, I would say that the pros are gonna work just fine. But if you need more memory, if you need anything beyond 32 gigabytes, well, you have to really consider the Mac ship. And on the M2 Max, you can now go up to 96 gigabytes of memory, which is an insane amount of memory for a laptop system. Now for Capture One, I also recommend the Max, and you can certainly use the Pro for that, but I think that for the extra, money you're gonna pay for that, you're going to use that in other programs as well. And with Capture One, here's the thing, even though I recommend the Mac ship, I don't recommend the top Mac ship configuration. I recommend just the base configuration ship with the least amount of GPU in the Macs possible because that tends to be where Capture One just shine and spending the extra money doesn't really show any performance gain or shows very little for that matter. Now, when it comes to video, I always recommend either the Max or the Ultra because the double encoder decoder engine is definitely gonna go a long way in just speeding up what you do on your system overall. RAM for these, I always say that as a pro, you should get 32 gigabytes. If 16 works for you, I mean more power to you, but 32 gigabytes give you more room for the apps to grow into and to utilize more memory if it should need it. And when it comes to SSD, I recommend one terabyte. And if you want to get the perfect combination, upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD, and you don't really have to have the conversation about SSD speed anymore. But I know that many of us has to really rationalize how we're going to best utilize the finite resources that we have to upgrade these machines. So if that's the case, if 512 works for you, you already saw in this video that there's really only one test that really shows any type of degradation at all in performance when it comes to SSD, and it's only a minute longer. <laughs> in retrospect, it's really not a big deal at all. Now, if you're an upgrader from the Apple Silicon chip, the best thing that you can do is circle the chip that you currently already have. For example, if I am currently at the M1 Pro, there are different pathways to upgrade. One of the things I can also tell you as well is that you can always upgrade laterally as well from, example, from the M1 going to the M1 Max or going to the Ultra, for instance, without having to really go into the next generation ship because there are certain advantages on these more pro ship that you're going to get as you start to jump up. And if you have the M2, I would argue that, hey, you know what? If you just need more GPU and you're okay with the speed and everything like that, getting an M1 Max system that is really on a discount right now because you know it's discontinued, you can get on the refurbished site and having more CPU on the system in general and more GPU is definitely going to help in certain tasks. So really think about what you do and there's so many different upgrade paths. Now the other thing I also want to point out as well is that at this point in time, M1 Ultra still reigns supreme. So even the M2 Max will still bow down for the most part to the M1 Ultra at this point in time. So there are so many different upgrade paths if you want to do that. Now, the best thing I can tell you though, that if you're really considering upgrading your current M1 right now, really have a good justification in doing so. So either because you need more performance out of the machine, just flat out more performance, you need to get more memory or a larger SSD in a system. So if you have one of those justifications, I think it makes perfect sense. If you don't, then your current machine works and I don't really see a point of really going in to upgrade for this generation machine because the performance gain overall that we're getting, it's good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's quite significant for us to really go in and spend that type of money on a brand new machine again. So that's just my personal perspectives on this. So when it comes to all these things, I have mentioned this in numerous videos already that we have to really configure our computer system based on the workflow and what we do most on the machine and have everything else just be secondary. For example, if you just only do work with large files every now and then, then configure your files or configure your machine rather so that it works well in Lightroom Classic if that's what you do. If you do video, then get the Max one for instance. So these are just some of the consideration points and I hope that this video helps guide your decision in configuring these machines, especially if you're lost out there and you're really trying to figure out what's going to be the best configuration for me. So anyway, if you have any questions or comment, please leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell if you're new and in our retrust.